Hello, my friends. Welcome to Henrik's Building Lounge. I am Henrik. And as promised, today we are starting to talk about the bridge that needs to be built across West Bookcase City and East Bookcase City. And the first step to doing this is we got to take a half base plate and measure how many studs. And it looks like it's around 30. Now, you might be saying, oh, what if there's like a little bit more room on the far left side and the far right side? Well, let's take a look here. On the eastern side, we've got around three and a half studs. And then let's go over to the other side. And here we see that we've got another three-ish studs. Anyway, <clears throat> so that means in theory, I could push this side and this side apart, but that makes it difficult to keep all the modulars hooked up using Technic pins. And I do want to maintain the ability to take them apart easily. So the naive solution is to build a straight bridge, 30 studs wide. Let's take a look at how that would work. Okay, so this is what I've come up with for <clears throat> just to throw together quickly with a couple plates and some Technic bricks, just to see what the layout would be like if placed between the two city blocks. As you can see, sliding it in, it's nearly perfectly flush. However, <laughs> however, this would mean requiring those, uh, those pins that have the little third bit on the side that a lot of Technic sets come with, which isn't really a problem, but and no matter what the solution I come up with, that's probably going to be the way I connect it to the rest of the mill setup. It is really satisfying, though, seeing that this is nearly perfectly centered. But it is weird. Just it's just weird. Shouldn't be like this. And also, it does make the whole thing a little bit rigid. So I think the solution is to add expansion joints like a real bridge. So let's go do that. Okay, it's time for more prototype stuff here. I've got my little expansion pin. Uh, let's plug that in here. I try to at least with one hand. There we go. And now let's grab the other side. Try and plop that in. Boom. There we go. And I'll be right back. Okay, so since this is temporary, I can just use whatever bricks I want. Um, just going to put that here so that it's approximately level. I'm going to try and fit this in, boom, like that. And now, check out this prototype here. This thing? What? Is going to float in the middle. So what this does is it's going to allow the bridge to expand and contract slightly across the road axis. It's not because my Lego are getting 
hot or cold and expanding, but it's purely for functionality purposes. This will make taking the bridge in and out of the setup much, much easier. And <clears throat> just to demonstrate how it actually works, let me take this and remove the cover. Uh, boop, 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 boop. There we go. There we go. So in the center, we have a single gear. And that's just there to make sure that both sides expand in sync with each other. That means the center piece is going to be floating. And it also means that whatever greebling decoration I come up with for the middle part is going to be centered in the bridge no matter what. So final version, I probably am going to try and stick to maybe if I can figure it out two studs, but realistically it's going to be four with maybe a little bit of underhang to slope it a little bit, maybe just for decoration. But yeah, I think conceptually this is going to work really well. I just have to do it now, make it work. The last thing, the last thing I want to mention is that this thing is about to fall down. No, uh, last thing I want to mention is that the bridge is only going to be dynamic in one axis. In if I go with this sort of prototype design, ideally I would want it to be able to swing back and forth along the Z axis so that if one side is like slightly in front or in the back relative to the other side, the bridge could sort of swing. And that would, that would be really cool. That, that would be really cool. And that's the only reason I want to do it. All right. I've got Lego to build. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Keep up with the progress. And until next time, going to add stuff to this bridge. Just kidding. I actually worked on it a little bit more, and this is where I'm at right now. As you can see, the front facade is now seamlessly integrated with the rest of the road. We have our little floating piece in the center. And the sides go all the way to the end. So what's new here? <clears throat> well, check out how it actually connects to the rest of the system. Got some four by four plates with pins that can be removed. And when disconnecting the bridge, it's not as necessary. As you can see here, I don't have to pull them off. Oops, let me disconnect these first like so. All right, so, so you can see I'm just pulling these out like that, and there you go. On the other hand, that happens if you just try to push it in. So, we just connect them with these longer pins here.
And there you go. A Mills plated or Mills compatible bridge section spanning two Ikea Billy bookcases. It's about 30 studs wide, 40 studs deep. And no, these additional two holes are not for more pins. They are for future lighting purposes. So I want to have like an LED here and an LED here. And then on the other side, an LED here and an LED here. And it's going to look amazing. Especially when there's more stuff on top to make this not look as awkward as it is right now. But you can see where this is going. Additionally, I got to extend the floating bit a little bit as well as create a little bit more walkway here so that the pedestrian traffic can also cross the road. In any case, that this is really the final update for now. And until next time, I'm going to try and finish up the uh, the walking section of the bridge.